Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next segment of Project Box Interviews. And today we are so excited to have Jen Kingwell from Down Under. Yay! <laughs> now, uh, you may not know this, but my motivation is to inspire myself. But I know that when people get to meet you and know you on a more personal level, they're going to run out and want to do your patterns. You know, <laughs> after all, you are the designer of the lolly, right? <laughs> Which yes. is the most ingenious fabric in the world for us <laughs> who hoard fabric <laughs> to get like how many how many runs on one yard? I different prints. Different prints on one yard. It's so fun because of the way uh, your patterns are. So tell us where in Australia you are. Okay, so I'm um, in on the east coast, but at the very bottom of Australia. So we, I live about an hour and a half outside Melbourne, um, and I live in this sleepy little seaside town for most of the year. Um, of course, over summer, it gets a bit crazy because everybody comes for their vacation here. So, um, but it's just this lovely, quiet sort of, um, yeah, it's a, we, we love it down here. We really do. Yeah. And you have a shop there. I do. So I've got a store called Amity Textiles mm -hmm. and we moved, we moved to live here about, uh, I don't know, six years ago or something now. And then we knew we loved it down here. So we actually moved the store from Melbourne down to the coast. Uh -huh. um, so I, it, I'm six minutes. It takes me six minutes to drive to work. That's in peak hour, you know. Oh, my gosh. My gosh. And, and does the shop still have a bakery or a cafe? Yeah, it does. It has a cafe at the front and we have a chef who bakes all our, all our goodies. And oh. um, so, yeah. It's it's not good. It's not good for the waist. I can tell you. <laughs> I bet not, because I saw on Instagram yesterday that there was a class there, and no one had to wear masks because you don't have any cases where you are. No, we don't. I think we've got about. I, I'm going to say five. I haven't heard the actual official report today, but five cases in quarantine, hotel quarantine that are returned from overseas, um, but, you know, people coming home to Australia from overseas. So they go into hotel quarantine for um, 14 days and, or until they return a negative test after 14 days. Hotel and then the only quarantine. Hotel, hotel quarantine. Yes, yeah. yes. Hotel quarantine. Because I think our government thinks that we can't be trusted. And, you know, some people can't be trusted to do the right thing at home. Um, but we have no community transmission at all. So outside of those cases that have come in from overseas, we have no cases in um, in Victoria, which is the state I live in. New South Wales yesterday or the day before recorded or one case in the community and the whole country's gone into like, oh, there's a case, you know, and should we lock down the borders? You know, the governments are all talking about, you know, so like I know it seems really bizarre for you guys that are still in the thick of it a fair bit, but um, we, yeah, we, we've done pretty well, but we, you know, we locked down early and and the, the especially in the big cities, people have done it really hard, you know, like we, we had hard lockdown where you weren't allowed to travel more than five kilometres for your home. You're only allowed outside for one hour a day, you know, and that went on for months and months and months. So it's not as, you know, the, the population have done a brilliant job at just keeping, at keeping it contained. So. so it's a good example of what worked then. Yes, yeah, and we, we warm up. We went into masks pretty, pretty early. So yeah. they do work, social isolation and masks. It does hard as it is but it does it does seem to have worked here so yeah i know when i saw those pictures yesterday i was like oh, i can't wait to do that i want to do that <laughs> yeah it's it's the first thing you know like we had another little mini lockdown about a month or two ago where we had five cases i think and so everybody went back into you know nobody in your home and masks everywhere and but it was quickly stomped upon and um 
so yeah but right. everybody seems to you know really take it very seriously and do the right thing so now i was thinking about when the last time we were together and we were at breakfast at road to california weren't we that yes. was 2019 right that was exactly when uh two, no, 2020 20 yeah and that was i think they just had the first few cases didn't they at right. that particular time because i can remember a, someone in one of my classes a lovely lady called ronnie bought me a box of masks to wear on the plane on the way home because she was worried oh. you know she news that um so she arrived in class with a box of masks for me which was so kind of her so yeah. yeah yeah so that's been see that's the thing is i miss all of that old life and it's going to be it, it it's going to be we will have some semblance of it again. It'll just be different, you know, and it'll I take agree. a while. I think we've, I think we sort of changed to a certain degree. I think the world has changed forever with this. I think it is going to be a different place because I can't imagine that this is going to be the only one of these that happens in the next however long, you know. So I think we are just going to have to live our lives a little bit different. But I'm with you. I mean, look, some amazing things have come out of it and that's the connection with technology and all of that sort of thing which is great but you still miss that physical contact don't you right right so you let's see back in uh january of 2020 when we were together uh you had just had a grandbaby yes yeah. but he's uh, he's two and a bit now so he must have been what one then right. yeah so and he's I, I I completely get, I keep talking about last year, but of course, last year actually never happened, really did it. Right. None of us did anything, none of us went anywhere, none of us saw anybody. So a, a whole year seems to have sort of just vanished. But yeah. Right. But you live close to them or you're... And we're not anymore. They've moved back there at the far side of Melbourne now. So Whoa. that was the things with lockdown was not seeing family, not seeing your children yeah. and what have you i think oh, it, it caused me to move you know yeah <laughs> where, are you, where are you now i'm on the other side of the mountain uh i'm in a suburb like a small community uh, that's kind of attached to portland oregon oh, so happy. it's called happy valley isn't that a sweet oh, name that's been <laughs> but but I literally am so close to my cousin and his family, my uh, both my sons and their families, and it has made a world of difference to my well-being. You know, Good. just, just uh, finding a spot because it didn't make any sense for us to be stuck. You know, on one side, yeah. and everything was getting tighter and tighter, and then we always have to travel over with snow and stuff. But that's yeah. That's that's the way it is here. But yeah, I I'm all about the grandbaby. So you just have the one little guy now? Yes, yep. I think that will be it forever. So I think so he's gonna um, be loved yeah. on by you. <laughs> yeah. He's number yeah. one. <laughs> no, for, for always number one. Yes. Yeah, always number one. Yeah. So what has this done? Uh so you can't leave Australia unless you're going to uh you can't like travel like no. i saw a post from gail pan on facebook that when it let locked down again she was like over it i'm so over it and i realized we all the people that we love to learn from are all over the place and if they're out of our country canada can't even come down you know yeah, so, yeah. It's just like you're just teaching remotely, uh, either in Australia or by Zoom over the. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, and even within Australia, there's still, um, you still take the gamble that if you go into state and they have a snap lockdown, that you're going to be either stuck on one side of the border or the other. So, yeah. that's even a little bit um, if you so I've been sticking mainly to just within the state, and uh -huh. even at the show, we just had tutors from this from our state, um, so that the, that border lockdown is not an issue. But yeah, it is, it's, it's very different, and I don't actually know when we're going to be. I say let out of the country, I'm making it sound like we're hostage, yeah. but, 
but the government is recommending initially they were saying middle of the year and then it was October but I did hear a little whisper the other day from the you know on the on the news the the head of Qantas said he doesn't think that the international flights will start again until 2022 so Wow. Yeah, it certainly has changed our world. So has that affected how your design process? Are you able to still be inspired and creative? And what are you doing? Well, um, I don't think it's changed my design process because I, I my, you, you know my design process. It's very disorganized. I call it organic because it sounds nicer, but um, you know, just sort of make what you want to make on the day you want to make it. But um, I've been writing another book, so I have had heaps to do in that time. So it's just going this week for to be proofread by a few other people other than myself to pick up all the mistakes that very well may be in it. Yeah, because um, you I'm, think it's perfect. I'm the worst proofreader in the world. I read what I think should be there, not what's actually there. So um, it's going off for proofreading and then we're hoping that it'll go to print sort of first week in April. Our aim is to have it out for Mother's Day, which, is you know, in first week in May, second week in May. So that's our sort of plan and we hope that, that yeah. But, yeah, so that's been exciting. Well, the thing about it, though, I've been thinking about you a lot because I know that you are a hand piecer and that you got your stuff done because they were in little baggies that traveled on the plane with you. And, and sure, when you're in a eight hour flight, you're going to get a block done at least. You know. So now that you're at home, I mean, do you have to actually like schedule your stitching time I mean it's I'm all over the board is my problem you know it, it's a really interesting thing I sew every single day like hardly a day goes by that I don't sew and it's interesting because like one of my daughters said to me not that long ago oh mum you work all day every day like here it is nine o'clock at night and you're still working and I looked at her and sort of gave a bit of a wry smile because I said to her but if I wasn't working I'd be sitting here stitching anyway <laughs> so, like, what is work and what isn't work you know when it when it's something you love to do it's not so they see it as I'm working all day I just see it as I'm doing what I love right and the other about it I can say this very openly and freely because I'm at home this morning and Richard is my husband's at work um he thinks I'm on a deadline for absolutely everything I'm doing because if I'm sewing he'll cook and do the dishes and iron me a shirt for tomorrow so I just say I've got to get this done even <laughs> if I don't I say that <laughs> Well, you know, I had visions. I truly had visions of you setting up a recliner like an airplane seat and then calling, you know, pressing the button for your drink and trying to get your mind wrapped around stitching out of your baggies, you know. That <laughs> it is very funny that you say that because I do stitch in a recliner and I have my staving table in front of me, which is a little bit like an airplane tray and I am very good at clicking my fingers to whoever <laughs> me a cup of coffee. So. <laughs> I'm not far off it. Business class all the way at my house. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what I thought. How is she getting any stitches done? She did it mostly on a plane. You know, <laughs> what is she doing? How is she making her mind wrap around that? <laughs> the aisles are just a little wider here at this point. <laughs> this aircraft. Yeah. I'm just in a more room. <laughs> and, and, and the flight attendant's a little older, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, that's hysterical. That's hysterical. So the new book, is it is it like a quilt book or is it? It is. It's a quilt book. But it's, um, for those that know my other book where I did a lot of sort of how-to in it, this one's a little bit more like a coffee table book. So it, there are quilt patterns in there, but some beautiful photography of sort of quilts. I, I guess my whole idea about this was, you know, I follow a lot of um, interior designers and homewares sort of things on social media and they always have beautiful what they call throws or linen something, you know, draped on the end of a bed. And 
I, I mean, some people might not agree with this, but you know, the modern interior designer never seems to include a patchwork quilt in anything because yeah. I don't think they see it as being um, cool and interior design, yeah. you know. So my vision for this, yeah, but my vision for this sort of um, book was to show that a traditional sort of patchwork quilt could look fantastic in that very modern sort of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So um, the photographer's done an amazing job. We shot it at two really cool houses, one of them sort of very timber concrete, very sort of industrial, and the other one's a little more... Um, it's all white floors and walls and, you know, sort of um, but just two different looks to show how they how they fit into that aesthetic. So, um, yeah, that, that was sort of my vision behind it. Uh -huh. And we've got in there are some quilts and some cushions and um, quilts, cushions, some table placemats and a little something that I'm keeping under wraps just for another few weeks until we start. So maybe another two or three weeks and we'll start doing some sneak peeks, but we just, yeah, so there's a little surprise in there for everybody as well. Uh -huh. oh, good. I can't wait. So yeah. um, as far as product goes, one of the things that uh, is somewhat difficult across the board, I mean, it took me three months to get my couch you know, so being how isolated in some ways Australia is, even though it's, you know, first world country, basically, yeah. how are you getting your, are you having problems with product? We are, do you know, I always at, at my store, I am a chronic over orderer of fabric. And we, the girls are always saying to me, we got a new delete shipment today and we've got nowhere to put it, you know, so we're always trying to sort of find different things around the store that we can put new fabric in. Um, and it's, there's, there are always timber boxes with fabric and we bring out some extra tables and, you know, we really um, utilise everything. We have nothing, none of those sort of extras in the store at the moment and we have big big, big holes, you know, big empty gaps in our shelving. Mm -hmm. um, so our fabric supplies have been incredibly slow getting to us. And, it, you know, I think it's um, shipping is part of the issue, but it's also that the mills all closed down, you right. know. So like all, all the mills were closed in Japan and Italy, everywhere. So I think the backlog is mm -hmm. tremendous. Fabric companies trying to get things, things out. But I know at my store, so many of our customers have used the time to finish all those things that they had half made or, had, you know, all of that. So that's been a bit of a real positive to, the, to that, you know. So we've had lots of people coming in with, look at this, I started it in 1995, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I finally got it finished. And so that's been a lovely thing to watch. And I think in some ways it's such a great thing to do because it, it it clears your mind a little bit when you get all those things that, you know, you every time you open up your sewing cupboard and there's, you know, four project boxes there, you're like, I really should do them, but I really want to start something new. But if you can get all those things done, I think it does open you up to be able to, to do whatever you wish to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, there, I think if we, there are many negatives about this last year, but I think there are equally with, you know, of course, I don't mean to sound and say this lightly because so many people have lo lost loved ones and right. what have you. But, you know, the, there have been some positives that have come out of it, it for all sorts of other, other reasons. And I know just here in our little town, people have been very much about support local, shop local, right. you know, our, our little local greengrocer that we've always used. They, they said they've just been so busy because people have been trying to, you know, really support them and keep them going. And so, you know, there are some things like that that I think have been good. Good. I totally agree. I think that um, the whole, uh, I mean, COVID as in and of itself is horrific and continues to keep on giving, you know, in different ways. But in other ways, there has been some reevaluation that was long overdue that can can now have 
a time to be done because we're always going, going, going. And uh, we don't, and now you suddenly have this time uh, to really evaluate, you know, it, even mm -hmm. on a basic level of, thank God I bought all that fabric. You know, I no longer, <laughs> no longer judge myself on how yes. much, I mean, when I was moving, I was so much into the judgment because the weight of the boxes, but now it's like, oh my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. I definitely am working out of my stash, but but I still, when I go uh, uh, have an opportunity to go to a quilt store and I see something, I, I'm not the least bit uh, judgmental <laughs> about my buying it, you know, because there'll be another one that'll lock, uh, lock us down and I'm going to have my fabric, you know. Exactly. And you know, I even, enjoy. I even think with things like, um, you know, Australians, because we're, um, so far from everywhere else in the world, we are great travelers. Like there is, hard, there are hardly, very few Australians that haven't been overseas, you know, and it, it's almost a rite of passage for kids when they finish school that they will, if they haven't traveled already with their family, they, they travel then. Uh -huh. And but of course, with no international flights, there's a really big push um, to see Australia. And it's so interesting because it's just like I know with my kids, we've just been discussing where will we go, you know, like 19, we did a family holiday and we went to Bali, you know, but then it's like next time, do we go to Tasmania or do we, you right. know, and there are so many places within our own country that we've never been, you know, I've probably been to more of the United States than I have travelled around yeah. Australia because just right. the way the way we operate so you know we're sort of excited about things like well this year we'll go to a few destinations within our own country and you know so I think it has just made everybody stop and take a bit of a breath and think about their lives mm -hmm. and probably to some extent think about what's super important to them like you with your family and moving closer you know, we Richard's mum is in her 80s and she lives alone and, um, you know, we're grateful that we're only a couple of hours from her since we've moved down here where it used to be almost four hours to get to her so she wasn't as accessible. So just little things like that, you know, they just make you just make you stop and have a bit of a think about things. Right, right. I, I totally agree. Well, you know, these Project Box interviews are about my Project Boxes <laughs> and... I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start. Well, it, because I haven't stopped, you know, I, so I took this class from you. Yes. Yes. And I was making a pillow. And there's my template. And there's all my pieces. Yes. And, and my signed book, which means so much to me. And now there's so many quilts in there that I want to do. But here's one piece, you know, of my beautiful I just I love it but I you know it's like I I forgot about what I was doing and I moved on to something and I got excited but you know I'm really close because it's yes. it's going to be a couch pillow and you are. and mm -hmm. I and I love uh any kind of handwork so you know this was a challenge though because it was uh curve piecing if anybody wants to see how absolutely fabulous that is i will just show them more and it was just um putting the fabrics together so this is why i'm talking to you because now i'm all excited all over again Good. I, I am going to uh, and i have the perfect uh, uh, the couch that took three months to get here I ordered it in December and it came last week you know this pillow is going to be perfect on there and then, and then I have this project box <laughs> and and the reason I you know I mean I have to I have to admit there were times that I was going I have been put under the spell of Jen Kingwell and I have no control over my life. It's like this, it's like this voice by this, by this. And I went crazy and have never made anything, but I have, see, it's barely can snap close. It, it like pops open. Um, but now I have this whole other vision of what I want to do. And it's because of my COVID life, but you know this, Yes, this is like everyone's, 
I mean, next to Gypsy Wife, I think this one, though, is everyone's favorite. You see people do incredible things with this. Oh, I agree, Anna. That is, that is the quilt that I think people have made truly their own by putting their little stamp on, on every part of it. And I love watching every single one of them pop up on social media. It's amazing. It is. <clears throat> and look at, look at, I had all these hexies in there. <laughs> that I had done already, you know, I, uh, and I love hex. Oh, look at this. I just am gushing over what my, my ability to do something. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. And, um, but now I'm excited. So you have caused me to look at fabric totally differently. So that's why this box is so packed. It is packed with fabrics that I consider uh Jen Kingwell fabrics. They're they're made by different people, but to me yes. they're all. So you know the little motifs yeah. that are gonna mm -hmm. fit in my world. You know, there's all kinds of little I yeah. look for tiny tiny prints now to go in my my yeah. town. And now I want to make that town my town of 2020, 2021. You know, so now I have to have somebody in a mask in my town. <laughs> Some section of my town is, it, you know, it's going to be have tents outside the restaurants and, you know, but this box is jammed full because every time I see a fabric that screams for this quilt, I have to buy a chunk of it. You know, you're so organized to have it all in one spot like that. Like most of us would be searching through our you know mess to try and find everything so well that's kind of you to say that i'm <laughs> i love that i mean look at this cute little I know. fabric so the so conversation cute. conversation prints or novelty prints whatever you wish to call them you know so many people just think about them from a point of view of making a, a child's quilt or a juvenile quilt but right. that are so jolly cute in quilts for adults. If you just, you know, fussy cut them in, they just work so well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I I have to say that, um, gosh, there's even a note. This is probably from you, huh? Let's see, my small, my small world kit notes. <laughs> I even <laughs> bought a kit to start myself. I off. thought it was I thought you'd found a check. I thought you were yeah. going to run off to the bank. No, there's, there. there's no money, there's no <laughs> money left. But it hit, having that class with you. Oh, look, let's see, there's another little note. It, oh, and it's from you too. Yeah. Um, having taken that class with you was um, the most educational class about fabrics that I had ever taken. And I learned so much from that. So if, I mean, if anybody wants to go back, I, I know that there's a, a quilt roadie video where you walked around the shop and talked about picking fabrics. That was an eye opener. That was an eye opener. So it's not just about making the quilts. It's about learning how a designer uh, looks at fabric or, you know, something like, you know, uh, something like this little bug, someone might think, oh, it's for some little boys bug quilt or something, but yeah. not for you. No, not for me. Yeah, not, not for you. So I think for me, that's the fun part of the project is the fabric collecting. I love that part of the of the yeah. process, as as a lot of us do. It's, uh -huh. it's gathering all the bits and pieces. So. Oh, and look at here. Look at what this is. Oh, there's a lolly. There's a lolly, and that's what we were talking about earlier. This is mm -hmm. one of Jen's fabrics where you get like all these different prints all off of one. This is like. What, this is like a quarter of a yard cut off of, and now look at I've already cut chunks out of yeah. it. So they might do. And we call them yes. because here in Australia, a lolly is like what you would call a candy. So like a little something, yeah. Oh. So we lolly. So that's to me, they're like quilters candies. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's where the name comes from. 
Well, what I can say is that um, this is all together and I couldn't, even when I moved and I put my stash out on the shelves, I couldn't take this box apart because it's been curated specifically for this quilt. And yeah, so- I, I look forward to watching that one grow. You'll have to put some, so where I've put hills, Annie, you might put the three sisters in there or something. You right. could, and see, at the end of my street, I can see Mount Hood. I live on one giant right. hill here. It's just, <coughs> just, we, we literally move from sisters to outside of Portland, but in my backyard, I might as well be in sisters. I had a herd of deer in my backyard, two ducks this morning, the squirrels, the birds, it's like uh, frogs, it's like sisters all over again. Gorgeous. So I have one more here that um, when I saw this, I, I, there was no control. You know, I, I couldn't buy it fast enough. And, you know, I, I'm totally okay with myself being a student and a pattern follower. You know, I'm not a designer. I'm not creative in the sense of, of people who do art quilts. I like having a pattern and being told what to do. So when I saw this pattern, there was no two, I mean, I couldn't get to the computer fast enough to buy it. Boho, yeah. Is that like your most uh, popular pattern this year? Um, it's interesting because we bought this one and Dear Jen at about the same time and the both of them have sold roughly the same. It's interesting because one month there'll be a real rush on Boho Art and then the next month there'll be a, a rush on just depending on what, you know, different stores are doing. So... But yeah, Andrea did a great job with that with that quilt because it's based on the the gypsy wife quilt. That's what it kind of <laughs> reminds me of, you know. Yeah. But, but it's in the shape of a heart. Yeah. So what what happened was Andrea Bear, who we did this pattern together, she um, made my gypsy wife quilt, but she condensed the blocks and made them into a heart shape, and. Um, I saw it on social media and thought it looked fantastic. And then I saw it in real life when Andrea did a class with me in Utah several years ago. So then she emailed me and said that some people had asked her about the setting um, and could she share it? And so we decided that we'd do a, a collaboration and redo a complete new quilt with different blocks and things, but it's sort of based on the on the gypsy wife quilt so that's sort of where that came from um we're going to have to change or not have to but we're choosing to change the name of the gypsy wife quilt too because since i made that quilt way back in 2011 the word gypsy has become a word that is now considered culturally insensitive so um, right. we will be changing the name of that with the next print run which will be very soon so right <laughs> change happens well, change does yeah, and, and, and it's good that it does. Um, the thing about it is that I look at this and it, I knew that I had to have it, uh, even if I never made it, but I'm going to make it. But I knew that this was a, a, a quilt that um, I, would, I would get stuck because of the fabrics. So then <laughs> there was a, the shop that I had ordered it from had a start off kit. And it was the Quilters Lodge, and they had this whole pack of fabrics. Now, see, once I have like chapter one, this is chapter yes. one. I can do chapter two, three, four, and five. You yeah. know, but I, when I looked at that, I was going, "Oh, I'll drive myself crazy. It'll be, it'll be ugly in here with the chaos." <laughs> um, but. Uh, so I got the starter pack and it's so funny because some of the fabrics in the starter pack are over on the shelf. I already <laughs> have them. But I'm sure I, you do. I felt good having this, this launching, yeah. launching point for this. So, they actually do a great job, Quilters Lodge. They do a lot of my stuff and they do it very, very, very well. This. Look at this nice bag that they put everything in. And, you know, it made me feel secure. Yes. 
Yeah. You know? I'll tell you, if ever you are wanting a weekend away with friends and you can get to Utah, they have the most amazing, um, why it's called the Quilters Lodge, they have the most amazing retreat centre that the shop is actually part of. Oh. And it's the bedrooms and this big, beautiful workspace. And so it's, it's an Where pretty... Where in Utah is that? They're Draper, so just sort of oh, yeah. south of Salt Lake, yeah. Oh, but it's oh. amazing. I I just walked around the whole place with my my jaw open. It's been so beautifully purpose built and set up for quilters. It's just amazing. Oh. So yeah, oh, I can't wait for that things to open up. That's what I miss the most is the quilt shows and retreats. You know, yeah. that you do with girlfriends. I. Um, but pretty much, I think uh, uh, a good portion of my quilt group in uh, Central Oregon, they're slowly all getting their vaccines. So maybe by fall, we'll be able to have a retreat, you know, where everybody feels comfortable, you know. And hopefully next year, the, the outdoor show might be on again, because that's two years missed, isn't it? Which is such a shame. But... Well, there's so many... Um, there's so many things that are uh, on the cusp. So I think the show was just on the cusp yet to see what happens with with um, the next couple months. If we can do well, the next couple months, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed that we can pull of that off. It okay, might still go ahead. Good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping because, um, you know, we do, we creative people and those that follow the creative people we just want to we want to be inspired you know and not everybody is a zoom person i mean if if you could see how it was in oregon with um uh the vaccine rollout you know if you aren't computer literate you're really going to have a hard time getting a vaccine around here you know and so the zoom classes are challenging for some people you know that it's not as satisfying for them it's great this one-on-one -on -one, you know yeah. but you get 25 people talking it's not quite the same you know that's exactly right and i've been in a few zoom meetings where people clearly haven't realized that Everybody can see what they're doing in this. <laughs> I know. It can, it can be a bit challenging to watch sometimes. <laughs> I know. It's kind of it's kind of interesting how there's just this uh, this learning curve that didn't happen for our generation. At, you know that we were just kind of forced into it. You know, I was lucky, you know, and you were also a nurse, but, you know, a lot of things happened, you know, on to moved on to computers. So you had some sense of, of how to move, you know, how to manipulate everything. But even with that, it's like, oh my gosh, I have one friend and I just tried to do a live Facebook thing and it was just a big cluster. I mean, it was just, I mean, you would have thought we were two idiots trying to talk on the, and it was on Facebook, you know, supposed to be the simplest platform ever. You know? uh, look, I, I'm very grateful that I, my girls are so tech savvy that I can say, you know, help, you know, and there's always someone around to help me, but there are so many things. And just when I think I've got it sorted, they go and change something, you uh -huh. know, and then yeah. I think, oh, knew how to do that and now it's had an update you know my my yeah. ipad's updated and now i can't figure out you know there's something different about this so no it, it, i still find it an incredible challenge but well it's kind of like the other day um uh our house is set up where there's a wi-fi i i can't i don't even know how it's done yeah. but it's it's like we have a cable downstairs and somehow it happens to the television upstairs by by a box a wi-fi box without a cable box well i woke up the other morning and um the tv was on downstairs full blast you know and i was like is there someone in the house been watching television downstairs? So then I woke woke my I said the TV's on downstairs. So we're both creeping down the stairs. 
And then he turns and tells me, go back upstairs. You know, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> And then he goes down and walks around and the television's on. Well, somehow, because the TV was on up here, when he went down to turn the heater down or something and came up and I turned the TV on off, it turned the one on down there. Yeah. And then, you know, we didn't know till the next morning the TV was on all night. You know, it's like, I don't like those smart houses. I, I'm very uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah, when your house is smarter than you are, that's a real problem. Isn't it? Right, right. Give me a log cabin. Give me a log yeah. cabin. <laughs> Sometimes it would be nice just to slip off the completely off the grid like that, wouldn't it? It would yeah. be just. Be, I wonder how long I could do it for though. I think I, I think I'd love it, but would I? Would I really? I don't well, know. I, if I had fabric and thread. I, right. I would probably do pretty good. I mean, yeah. truly for me, this whole uh, pro, uh, this whole last year has been um, socially comfortable for me because internally I'm basically an, an introvert. So I just got to settle in, you know, I yeah. didn't have to um, kind of be out there, you know. I think we quilters or crafters have been very... That's one thing I think we've probably coped a lot better than a lot of other people because we have mm. had that comfort of, you know, what we love to do. Yeah. I think the people that probably found it the hardest were people that didn't have a hobby, you know, I, I think that would be hard. But we could all retreat to our sewing rooms and just immerse ourselves in what we love. So it was almost like we were built for lockdown, I think, with the, the craft world really sort of had a, a backup but yeah so are you doing anything else besides quilting are you doing any other kinds of things except for snapping your fingers for the yeah. flight attendant <laughs> I, um am i doing no do you know what i'd love i i would love to do try some other um you know disciplines in the craft world but there's always something that needs to be, it, it's probably, and it's such a small thing to even mention, but it's probably the downside of being, of your hobby becoming a business because it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I've got to get the next block of the month program done for the stores. I've, I'm running late on that because I have been concentrating on the projects for the book and I've got stores emailing me. Um, did we miss out? I haven't seen the new block of the month program. Well, of course, that's because I haven't done it or I'm just in the middle of doing it. So, yeah. you know, there's always something so much in all this. I'd love to do some knitting or something along those lines. I never get time just to um, turn off and just do something for me. Yeah. But it's it's right. such a thing to mention that it's not even worth oh, it you know? but yeah but sometimes you do need that little mix of something you know it's um and and i've often said in the past that every quilter wants to own a quilt shop till they do yes that's it's very <laughs> you know and then you find out oh oh that, you don't get to get free fabric it doesn't no. feel that great you know yeah yeah it's so, exactly but it just it's a it puts a whole different slant on being a quilter when you own a quilt store. I'm really lucky because I've got um, like I can step away from that business. I, I've had to build it like that so because I travel used to travel so much. Uh -huh. So um, the girls and I have to be very careful how I say this now. The girls and gentlemen that work in the business because we've got three men that work in the business now. Um, they like really I can go away and not even think about the shop they're very proficient and very good and run it as well if not better than I mean sometimes I have to go and ask other people hey I've been asked this question what's the answer sort of thing because I I don't know exactly what's been going on with it but they really do you know they're very conscientious and they just you know work hard and work and do whatever's best for the business i'm really fortunate i know so um it, it's it's good yeah well that, to... you have to do it that way if you're going to be creative i think i don't yeah. think you you know if you're just a quilter who owns a quilt shop and uh that's totally different than i think a designer 
who's actually designing a product or artwork for other people, you have to have that space from the number crunching, which yeah, is a big I, part of this. And it's really interesting. And it, at work, the, the staff will say that they keep the white noise. You know, my husband will say to, the, to everybody, don't bother Jen with that because it'll just be white noise to her. Just we'll sort it out, sort of thing. Because as wah, soon as wah, my wah, head, wah, wah. yeah, as soon as my head gets full of white noise, so if I probably knew every little nitty gritty thing that was perhaps had gone wrong, or you know that was there was something, and I was you know concentrating on that too much, I I stopped designing because you just get bogged down with that sort of daily you know right. thing. So we've really, I mean, I've had the shop now for twenty two years. I think really so, that long. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we've sort of worked out over the time that you know everybody's got a portfolio, everybody's responsible for their own part of the business, and they you know they all work together to you know and it just it works well, it just works really well, and they literally you know I'm lucky that I've got family involved in it too, so mm -hmm. there's always someone else there to answer the question. I just go in, eat the cake, drink the coffee. <laughs> I want to go. I want to visit and drink the cake and eat the coffee. I mean, or eat the cake and drink the coffee <laughs> and buy the fabric. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I even, I even steal the fabric according to my staff. They always go. That they're quite. I've got one that's quite funny. She always says to it, and she'll say it to customers. And sometimes they look a bit, and then she she'll say she owns it. It's okay. But they'll go. Well, we've got to watch this woman over here. She just takes things and never pays for it. <laughs> oh man so at inventory time that's your time of reckoning huh yeah. i know it does all go through the point of sale otherwise it really messes up the website if you know if i've taken three meters and i haven't put it through the point of sale but, yeah. but um yeah it's they just they tease me about being the biggest thief we have at the store so <laughs> Well, this has been lovely. Um, so again, do you know the name of the book? It's called Quilt Recipes, following on from Quilt Lovely. We thought, well, okay. you know, it's how to make a quilt. So that's, yeah. yeah. So we'll look for that in a couple months. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm hoping sort of bit, very beginning of May, it should be out there for people to, to gather. Okay. But yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. It's, that'll be I'm excited. Fun. It. And then I yeah. can't wait till uh, you can sign my copy. <laughs> I just, I that will be a great day. Well, we'll lovely. say goodbye to everybody. And, and it was lovely. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Anna, for asking me. It's so nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Now, I just have to luckily. Um,